Sorry, looking at live pictures from Sanford, Florida. A lot of angry people there uh, over the uh, shooting death of Trayvon Martin, the 17-year-old boy who was walking through a gated community, was shot and killed by a community uh, watchman, if you will. Uh, Sanford Police Department Chief Bill Lee has announced just a little while ago he's stepping aside at least temporarily. The parents have been meeting with Justice Department officials. They're getting ready to come. Do you see those microphones over there? They're getting ready to come to a news conference and get the, we'll get their reaction uh, to the uh, suspension of the police chief. We'll also hear what they had to say about their meeting with the Justice Department, which is now looking into potential civil rights violations. We're staying on top of this story that's causing a, a lot of outrage all across Florida, indeed all across the United States. There are very serious questions about whether the confessed shooter in this case, George Zimmerman, used a racial slur in his deadly confrontation with Trayvon Martin. CNN's national correspondent Gary Tuckman has this part of the story. This is edit room 31 at CNN Center in Atlanta. This is one of the most sophisticated audio edit suites in the broadcast news business. And right here is Rick Sierra. He's our audio design specialist. He's one of the best audio experts in the business. Rick, if you can, I have not listened to this portion of the 911 tape at all. I just want to hear it raw right now. If you can play maybe 10 seconds before it and let's listen. Okay. Down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay. Which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. Okay. Uh, and then the back entrance is the one that was closed. You may not have heard the moment in question because it was so quick. How long does that portion last that everyone's talking about? A second 18 frames. Second 18 frames, so that's about 1.6 seconds. Correct. So let's listen to it like 10 times in a row if we can. Okay. What we're listening for is the racial slur, coons. It follows the F word. Some people say they hear it, others say they don't. It's certainly a, a lot clearer when we listen to it this way. Correct. Is there anything else we can do with that audio to make it even clearer? Well, you can, I, I already did a little bit of boosting at 2.2 kilohertz and at 4.6 kilohertz. Uh, that's boosting the high end of it the sounds voice. sounds like it can pow power the flux capacitor. Yeah, that's right, okay. that's right. Okay. What Rick has done is lowered the bass. So why is it that you want to get rid of the low end of the audio, the bass of the audio? Well, to minimize the noise. To minimize the noise. So that takes away the noise and allows us to hear the voice more clearly. That's correct. I'll boost it up a little bit more there. And we'll give it a shot here. That does sound a little clearer to me. Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds like this allegation could be accurate, but I, I wouldn't swear to it in court. That's what it sounds yeah. like to me. Yeah. It's very difficult to really pinpoint what he's saying. Rick, can we play just that second word, what we think the second word is, and hear if that sounds any different? Okay. I mean, it certainly sounds like that word to me, although you just can't be sure. Let me show That sounds even more like the word than using it when it was with the F word before that. That's, that's correct. Only George Zimmerman knows if he used the slur, but he's not talking. So the phone call, like so much of this case, remains a mystery. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Atlanta. All right, let's bring in our uh, legal analyst, Sunny Hostin, once again. She contributes to uh, In Session on our sister network, True TV. Uh, what do you make of this whole investigation, whether or not a racial slur is actually heard on that 911 tape? Well, it certainly is significant if the Justice Department Civil Rights Division has to prove that this was a hate crime because they would have to prove what was in George Zimmerman's mind. If he indeed uttered that racial slur, that would certainly make a civil rights case a bit easier uh, for the Justice Department. It would be very, very difficult absent some sort of history of racial animus or, or, or something um, besides uh, what we have so far to show um, a hate crime and to prove a hate crime. It's a pretty but high this, hurdle, if, though, if that indeed, they have to go over, right? If, that's right. And, and, and many people at the Justice Department have said that in, in, a, in a way of trying to, I think, manage expectations because it's one of the highest hurdles in our legal system. You would have to prove intent in a hate crime. Very, very difficult. Now, we know New Jersey in the Darun Ravi case did meet that hurdle. But again, very, very difficult to prove hate crimes uh, under our federal law. And that's why I think so many people 
are, are really honing in on this 911 call and whether or not that is a racial slur. I want you to stand by, Sonny, because we're going to be hearing directly from the parents. They're meeting, uh, they've met uh, actually with Justice Department officials. They're on their way to the news conference where you see all those folks right now. We're going to have live coverage. I want to discuss with you afterwards as well. Sonny, stand by.